Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Richard Schneeman. This is the third week of my database management class. If you missed uh, any other of the weeks, you can feel free to go back and check some of that material. We're going to start off this week with a recap of last week's material. So first we talked about uh, making database backed models. So we had Ruby code and we were able to store and persist data for those models in a database. <coughs> so here's an example of a table. This would be a user's table. We have an ID column, a name column, a favorite number column, as well as a movie column. And then we have uh, different values in those rows. We could use SQL to query our table and select star from users where name equals Richard limit one. And that does exactly what it sounds like it does. It, it pulls everything from the user table where name is going to match Richard and it's going to return back one result. If there's many, many users named Richard, it's only going to return back one. Uh, we didn't actually talk about limit, but it's a relatively, hopefully painful um, concept. So this is one way that we could query this table using SQL. If we wanted to use active record and we had a class named user that was backed by active record and we were pointing at this database, we could call user.where and then pass in a hash of name, hash rocket, and then a string Richard. And then if we only want one value from that instead of an array of users named Richard, we would just call dot first. So hopefully this shouldn't be new material to you, and hopefully you should be able to look at that SQL statement and look at this Ruby code and understand at, at least a little bit about how they how one maps to the other. You can always call dot two SQL instead of calling dot first on the uh, the Ruby method, and that will actually give you the the SQL that it's generating in order to find that value. If uh, this is confusing or new information, please review some of last week's material. We also talked about joins. We talked about storing different types of data in different tables. We talked about maybe having a cars table where we'd have a primary ID, a, a primary key, um, the type of the car that it is, maybe contact compact or sedan, a foreign key called user ID, and this is how we're actually going to reference the user table, and then a condition. And in the user table, we would have a primary key called ID, a name, as well as favorite number, and a movie, just like we had in the last example. So we can uh, we can join using the foreign key in cars, user underscore ID, and the primary key in users, ID, in order to build a relationship. So in this, in this scenario, uh, users has many cars, and cars belong to, a single car belongs to a user. Uh, so again, we call that, uh, whenever we merge those two together, we would do that using a joins query. Uh, very useful, very effective, and that's actually how our data is relational. Okay, now it is time for a quick quiz. I've pasted a quiz into a gist uh, Please feel free to use any previous material to try and answer it. Um, and then I've also pasted the uh, pasted some answers in a, another gist onto, uh, onto GitHub. Try not to cheat too much. See how much you remember from last qu class. And uh, if you don't understand something, please just try to review the, the previous material. Maybe Google around a little bit. And hopefully you can uh, you can come up with uh, some, some reasons as to why exactly that was. So thank you for sticking around. Look on for the next video as we talk about Ruby. We're gonna get very heavily involved with Ruby as well as building views using pure Ruby. So stick around and thank you for coming by.